Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this video, we'll be looking at Photoshop Edit Metadata Techniques. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and also click that like button as well. Okay, let's get to it. I have this photograph opened up here inside of Photoshop Elements 15, and Right now we're in the editor, as you can see, and we'll look at how you can edit the metadata, which is additional information about the picture that's stored with the image, right here inside of the editor. Now if you're using the organizer for doing this kind of work, the organizer will save some information into the metadata. For instance, if you add keywords over there or tags, those are all saved in the keyword section of the metadata. But it, you can actually do more editing of it here in the editor than you can over in the organizer, interestingly enough. Okay, let's take a look at that and I'll show you where you can find this. Go up here to File and come down to File Info right there. And there it is. Notice at the top there is the name of the file. I'm just going to close this just for one second here. I'll come back to that in a second. I'm just going to put the bird over here. There we go. So we're not cutting his head off. It'll look a bit better on our picture. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so the top line up here is basic and it gives you just some basic information in here about the image that you're working with. Now, I previously showed a video or made a video that shows how to put a logo onto an image or a watermark onto an image. You could do a copyright onto your image that way. That is a visual mark on your image, but it isn't the last thing you need to do if you want to copyright your images. The other thing that's important to do down here is a copyright notice inside of the metadata right down here. This one's easy to do. Where it says copyright status, let's just change this to copyrighted. Put your notice in here. I'm going to backspace up. Now what this should say is copyright, like that, the date, and your name. Now this has to be in this sequence for it to be legal. And it has to be a person's name. It can't be a company name unless the company is a corporation. Corporations can own copyrights, but other kinds of companies cannot. So it has to be in your name. You also can add in more information down here if you want to. Just like that. And if you have a web page that has copyright information on there, you know, a, a resource page on your website, you can put a link right here to that resource page. Now take a look right down below here. This is some information that cannot be changed. Notice that there's no white box down here. The creation date, this is the date and the time when I took the original photograph. Modification date, this is right now. because I'm working on the image right now, so that's the modification date. And the application, of course, as I've already mentioned, is Photoshop Elements 15. And I'm using the Windows version and a little format right down there a bit. You can ignore that pretty much. At the top of this page, there's a few more fields that you can fill in. You can give the document a title up here. You can also give a document a title, of course, over an organizer. And if you did, it would then show up right here. You can put an author in here or even multiple authors if you want to. Just put in a semicolon or a comma to separate those values. Author title in here, you know, owner, you know, photographer, whatever, and a description. You can give this thing a rating if you want to. These are the same ratings that you can add onto your images over in the organizer. And if you do it in the organizer, it'll be showing up right here. If you have somebody who is writing your descriptions for you, you can put their name in here if it's different. And if you add keywords, they list right in here. And again, if you put your keywords in over in the organizer, they'll show up right here. So this is a real easy way to do that. Just type those in whatever you want to have in there. You got one more stars, I think. Okay, coming down to our next section here, the camera data section. This is the camera make and model. It was a Fujifilm and it was my old five fine picks S5100. Great little camera, easy to carry around and took very good pictures for the kind of stuff that I use here. You know, the online stuff is great for that. Focal length, there's the shutter speed information, image size information, the resolution that I was shooting at right there, and of course the flash didn't fly. Obviously it's a 
bright image and didn't need a flash, so no flash required on that one. Again, notice how all this information, this is all factual information about how the picture was actually taken, so there's no way for me to edit that information, and there's really no reason why you'd want to. Coming on down here, we get into some additional information. This is used for additional purposes. Origin down here, let's say you're using your image and selling your image, selling your picture to a magazine or a newspaper or some other image destination where they wanted some additional information such as when was the picture taken, there's the date created. Now I can actually change the date created information up here. It's grabbing that from the first page up here and creation date right down there. So it automatically fills that for you, but you can change it if you want to. City, state, province, and country, I can put that information in if I wanted to in here. This happens to have been in San Diego, California. Credit line, you know, who took the photography, you know, who, who was the photographer for the picture, the source. If you have a headline for your image right down here, instructions on how it can be used or should be used, transmission references, also urgency levels in here. You know, if it's a news item, you may want to have a an urgency level in there. That would depend upon who you're working with. And then we have some additional information down here that can be used for, uh, again, for adding in additional information if you're going to be selling this or it's going to be used by a news service. They'll want some of this stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff. You know, the creator, who is it that did this, the job title, address, all your contact information in here for the creator, including website or websites and then information about the image. Notice how it has pre-filled in the information for when it was first created. You can change that. You can give it an intellectual genre if you want to in here. If you have a scene code, you can find out more about scene codes. There's a little website right there. Notice that these are news codes. So if you're selling this to a news service, you might want to find the right news code. The more information you can add in here, the easier it will be for them to use your images. So it's not a bad thing to do. And then scrolling on down, here's your headline, description, keywords again. IPTC subject code. More information right down here on, again on that news codes. Description writer, IPTC status, credit line source. Notice how it has copied the copyright notice down here from the basic page right there. Copy that information and pre-filled that at the bottom of this page for us. There we go. And if you have rights usage terms, you can put those in down here. I stuck those with a copyright, but I could actually have put those down here instead. Better place for it, and you can add in a lot more. Notice that there are scroll bars on the right-hand side here. You can put a lot of information inside of these fields. It will scroll down if you're adding in more than will fit in that small box. And some additional stuff in here, extension. Again, you can look for more standards up here at this website to find out more about this. If there's a person, who is that person in there? Name of a featured organization, code of featured organization, the event that it was in. If there are models in your image, model information, model age. So if you hired somebody to be in your picture, was there a minor model age disclosure in here? Were they a minor? Did you get a model release from them? You add that in here. What was the model release identifier? So a lot of information you can add in here, which will be very useful for people that you are selling the image to. And again, all this stuff is stored with the actual image. So it's right there. They can take a look at this, open the image up. They can take a look at the metadata, and it's right there for them. OK, GPS data. Now, my old FinePix camera didn't have any GPS attached to it. Newer cameras do. So this would be pre-filled automatically by a camera that happens to have GPS data. For instance, your smartphones would have all this stuff filled in automatically. More modern cameras will have all this stuff filled in automatically. If you're working with a video and there's going to be some audio to it, you can add in here audio data for your information. A lot of stuff in here about that as well, as you can see. Video data, if you're taking video, this would be pre-filled if it was a video recording frame rate, so forth, all kind of pre-filled in here. And again, you can put in here more information about that. A little bit here about Photoshop. If I had been working on this in Photoshop, doing Photoshop 
techniques and then saving that history that would show up in here. The DICOM down here, this is specific to the medical industry. So if this was a medical picture, if it was an x-ray, something along those lines, we'd have a patient name up here, patient ID, date of birth of the patient, patient sex, study ID, referring physician. So a lot of stuff in here that is specific to hospitals and the medical industry. So if it's a medical image, you can add some of this information in here as well. You'd probably be required to do that. Finally, the raw data. This doesn't mean data about a raw photograph, you know, the raw format. This is the data in raw XML format. So this is all XML data, and it's actually stored as XML with your actual image. And it's all in here. Everything that's in the rest of these up here, you can find all of that in this raw data format. Now this can be copied out. Just select it and you can copy that out. And then this could be used in another program that could grab this, put it into a database, whatever. It's all accessible right there depending on how the image is going to be used. So there you go. That's how you can edit your metadata in here for your images. And again, for most of us, there's just a few that really that matter and you should take care of and set those up. One is your copyright status right there. If it's copyrighted or public domain, you know, it'd be one of those two choices. Your copyright notice, and that should be in this format, copyright, the year, and your name. Unless it's a corporation, then the corporation's name in here. If you have a web page about your copyright information, put that link right down there. And you can give it a title up here and put your author name right down there. Fill in anything else that you want to fill in. They might find interesting or useful, but this is the important stuff right here. I'm going to show you where you'll find this all again. I'll choose OK on that. It will then save that into the picture. Back up here to File, to File Info, and there we go, right there. Now on Template down here, this allows you to import an existing template or export this as a template. You can then import that again. So if you have things that you always do over and over again, you know, if your copyright notice always stays the same and some of this stuff is always filled in the same, you may want to export that as a template and then on your other pictures just import that template will pre-fill those fields in for you. Preferences, not a whole lot here. You can show an error log. If you want to see if there's a problem in here, you can go ahead and show that, but that's really all that preferences is about. But there we go. Now any good graphics program can open up the metadata from your image. This isn't limited to just Photoshop elements. This will work in Photoshop. It will work in any other good image editing program can access this metadata. Okay, there you go. So that's how you can edit metadata here on your images right inside of the Photoshop Elements editor. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.